Today we are discussing the growth of functions. Now, the growth of functions is often described using a special notation, and it consists of three. The big O notation, the big omega notation, and a big theta notation. These special notations estimate the growth of the functions without worrying about constant multipliers or smaller order terms. As such, using these notations make us not worry about the hardware and software used to implement an algorithm. Furthermore, these notations make us assume that the different operations used in an algorithm take the same time, which simplifies the analysis considerably. The big O notation is used to extensively estimate the number of operations an algorithm uses as its input grows. With the help of this notation, we can determine whether it is practical to use a particular algorithm to solve a particular problem as the size of the input increases. Hence, we can compare two algorithms to determine which is more efficient as the size of the input grows. This notation has already been used in mathematics for more than a century. It is also widely used in computer science when analyzing algorithms. A German mathematician, Paul Bachmann, first introduced Big O notation in 1892. It's sometimes called the Landau symbol after the German mathematician, Edmund Landau, used this notation throughout his work. This notation was popularized in computer science by Donald Knuth, who also introduced the Big Theta and Big Omega notations, which will be discussed later in this video. For solving a problem, one having 100m squared plus 17m plus 4 operations and another one having n cube operations. Now, big O notation will help us determine that the first algorithm uses few operations when n is large, even if it uses more operation when n is small. The definition of big O notation is as follows. Let f and g be functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. We say that f of x is a big O of g of x. If there are constants c and k such that f of x is less than or greater than c g of x whenever x is greater than k. Take note that f of x is called the test function while the c g of x is called the mystery function. In simpler terms, the definition that f of x is big O of g of x says that f of x grows smaller or slower than some fixed multiple g of x as x grows without bound. The constants c and k in the division are called witnesses to the relationship of f of x. To establish such a relationship, we need only one pair of witnesses. This means that when we are able to satisfy the inequality of k, we can say that f of x is a big O of g of x. Take note that when there is one pair of witnesses to the relationship f of x is a big O of g of x, there are infinitely many pairs of witnesses depending on what the given c and k is. Now, Let's demonstrate the definition with a graph. In big O notation, the definition of f of x is the lower bound of g of x. Let us say that f of x is x squared plus 3. And the g of x is 4x squared. When we are going to graph it, it produces the following image. So, in this portion, let me just highlight that. We can see that a point wherein x is greater than 1, f of x is big O of g of x. In any values of x is greater than k, it satisfies the equation of the big O notation. In this case, we can see that k is equal to 1 and c is equal to 4, hence producing an inequality of x squared plus 3 is less than or greater than 4x squared. Now, here's an example. 
show that f of x is equal to 17x plus 11 is a big O of x squared. The first step is to get a certain value of k. In this case, we can let k be 1. Now, what we need to do is to solve for c, given the following inequality of f of x is less than or greater than c g of x. Following the definition of big O notation, we arrive to the following inequality. 17x plus 11 is less than or greater than cx squared. Take note that to get for c, we need to let k equal to x. Now let's plug in x equal to 1 in the, into the equality. So that becomes 17 times 1 plus 11 is less than or greater than c 1 squared. Which becomes 17 plus 11 equals c, making c equal to 28. Let's plug that into the equality since we already got the value of k and c. This then becomes 17x plus 11 is less than or greater than 28x squared. To check the equation, let us pick a number that is greater than 1 because we know that x should be greater than k and k in this case is 1. Let's make x is equal to 2. Plug it into the equation, we get the following inequality of 45 is less than or equal to, which holds true. Now, take note that this applies for all values of x when it is greater than 1. When we plot in the graph, we can see that 28x squared is greater than the f of x, which is 17x plus 11, when x is greater than 1. As such, we can conclude that k is equal to 1 and c equal to 28 are witnesses to the relationship of f of x is a big O of g of x. Now, question. Do we have a different set of k and c? Of course, the answer is yes. Take note from the definition earlier that when there is one pair of witnesses to the relationship f of x is a big O of g of x, there are infinitely many pairs of witnesses depending on the given c and k. Now, what if we let k be 2 instead of 1? When solving the equality, we get the value of c, which is 11.25. This then becomes 17x plus 11 is less than or equal to 11.25x squared when x is greater than 2. To verify the inequality, let us test the inequality when x is equal to 3. So when we plug that into the equation, that will be 17 times 3 plus 1 is less than or equal to 11.25 3 squared, which makes it into 62 less than or equal to 101.25, which is true. As we can see also, when x is greater than 2, f of x is the lower bound of g of x, and this extends infinitely. Therefore, we can conclude that k is equal to 2 and c equals to 11.25 are witnesses to the relationship of f of x is a big O of g of x. In constructing algorithms, instead of having a decimal number, we make it as a whole number. Since we cannot really say that an algorithm or a function has 11.25 operations, we can simply round off the C making it 11. 
If we still test when k is equal to 2 and c equals to 11, it still holds true. Now, there are common types of bigger notation. Bigger notation is used to estimate the number of operations needed to solve a problem using a specified procedure or algorithm. The functions used in this sort of estimates often include the following. 1, log of n, n, n log of n, n squared, 2 raised to n, and n factorial. Take note that the log has a base of 2. The graph shows time complexity of certain big O notations. This basically shows the efficiency of an algorithm, which is not going to be part of this lecture, but gives us a glimpse which big O notations are efficient. Now, algorithms with a big O of 1, a big O of a log of n, and big O of n is fast given a certain number of operations. In reality, algorithms mostly lie in this range. Now, we now know that the big O notation is used to describe the growth of functions, but it has certain limitations. In big O notation, f of x is a lower bound of big O of g of x. What if it's at the upper bound or in a lower bound? Or it can be only in an upper bound. For these situations, we use big omega notation and the big theta notation. Now let's discuss big omega notation. By definition, big omega notation tells us or states that when f of x and g of x be a functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers, we say that f of x is a big omega of g of x. If there are constants c and k such that f of x is greater than or equal to c g of x whenever x is greater than k, we can actually see a strong connection between big O and big omega notation. If f of x is big omega g of x, g of x is also a big O of f of x. This means that in big omega notation, f of x is an upper bound of g of x. And in big omega notation, g of x is a lower bound of f of x. Now here's an example. Show that 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is big omega of x cubed. Just like the previous examples, what we need to find are the witnesses. Instead of making f of x is less than or equal to cg of x true for x is greater than k, we make f of x is greater than or equal to cg of x whenever x is greater than k. Since we are testing whether f of x is a big omega of x cubed. So in this example, we can let k equal to 1 and c equal to 1. We can verify it if it's true by using a table. So when n is equal to 1, f of x is 20, and g of x is 1. When it's 2, it's 91, and 8, when it's 3, 268, and 27, and lastly, when it's 4, it's 599, and 64. So we're just basically plugging in the values of x, whatever the value of n is. So when n is equal to 1, we plug it that into the x of f of x and cg of x. So from the table, we can conclude that 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is a big omega of x cubed. With the witnesses of k equals to 1 and c equals to 1. As such, f of x is an upper bound of g of x. Now let's move on to the big theta notation. By definition, it states that f of x and g of x are continuous one functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. We say that f of x is big theta of g of x. If f of x is big O of g of x, and f of x is a big omega of g of x. Therefore, 
when f of x is a big theta of g of x, we can say that f is a big theta of g of x, that f of x is of order g of x, and that f of x and g of x are of the same order. Now, here's an example. Show that 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is a big theta of x squared. Now, from the previous example, we already know that 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is a big omega of x cubed. With witnesses of k equal to 1 and c is equal to 1. Let's just write it down. Now, to determine whether the function f of x is a big theta of g of x, we need to find both witnesses that makes it a big omega of g of x and a big theta of g of x. Now, to determine the function f of x is a big theta of g of x, we need to find both witnesses that makes it a big omega of g of x and a big O of g of x. To solve for big O, we know that f of x should be less than or equal to c g of x. The possible witnesses to make f of x lower bound is to make k equals 1 and c is equal to 20 whenever x is greater than k. To verify it, we can construct a table again. Take note that whatever n is, that's what we're going to plug in into x. When x or n is equal to 1, it's actually 20 and 20 for both cases. When it's equal to 2, f of x is 91 and 160. When it's 3, it's 268 and 540. And lastly, when it's 4, it's 599 and 1280. So based from the table, we can see that f of x is less than or equal to cg of x since the values of cg of x is greater than f of x. Hence, we can say that f of x is a big O of g of x. So in here, when we plot it into our graph, we can see that f of x is a lower bound when x is greater than 1. So here's f of x, and here's g of x. And let's highlight it to make things clear. Here is the bound that makes f of x less than or equal to g of x. Hence, we can conclude that 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is a big theta of x cubed. The following condition of x cubed is less than or equal to 8x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 and less than or equal to 20x cubed, where the witnesses of the big omega and big O notations a is equal to 1, c is equal to 1, and a is equal to 1, and c equals to 20, whenever x is greater than k. To visualize it from a graph, we can see that f of x is an upper bound of x cubed, while it is on the lower bound of 20x cubed, making the testing function a big theta of g of x.